Hello, everyone. Today, I'm thrilled to guide you through the intriguing U.S. dramatic sci-fi film, Arrival. Directed by Denny Villeneuve and starring Amy Adams, this film was released in November 2016. It centers around 12 alien spaceships that appear across Earth, triggering widespread alarm. Linguistics expert Louise Banks is enlisted by the military to decode the alien language and discern their intentions. As Louise unravels their complex communication, she undergoes profound personal revelations that reshape her understanding of time and reality. Will she manage to foster understanding between humanity and these extraterrestrial visitors before time runs out? Denis Villeneuve's arrival is far from your standard alien invasion film. It delves into deep philosophical themes concerning language, comprehension, and the perception of time. Its narrative unfolds in a non-linear manner, engaging viewers who appreciate intricate storytelling, although this style may puzzle those seeking a more direct plot. The film is visually breathtaking, capturing a sense of wonder with the alien ships in their distinctive written language. Overall, Arrival, 2016, is a visually spectacular and thought-provoking sci-fi film that lingers in the mind long after the credits have rolled. If you're searching for a smart and emotionally engaging tale of alien contact, Arrival is essential viewing. However, if your preference lies with action-packed blockbusters that provide clear answers, this film might not be your cup of tea. So without further ado, let's dive into Arrival. Will Louise decipher the message and prevent a global crisis? Join me in this recap to unravel the story and discover the answers together. Before we get started, please remember to subscribe to my channel to stay updated with all the exciting content coming your way. All right, let's begin. Dr. Louise Banks, a renowned linguist, is introduced through poignant flashbacks of her life with her daughter, Hannah. We see tender moments of their relationship in the profound sorrow Louise experiences after Hannah's untimely death from a rare illness. This prologue underscores themes of loss, memory, and the passage of time, showing the lasting impact on Louise. One seemingly ordinary day, Louise notices a ruckus around the television in the common areas as she walks to her class. Her students are distracted by their phones and ask her to turn on the TV, where breaking news reveals that a UFO has landed in Montana with more in other locations worldwide. The university alarm rings and Louise dismisses her class. As she goes home, she finds the world in turmoil, with evacuations, jets flying overhead, and the military taking over. At home, Louise learns that 12 UFOs have landed. The next day, classes are suspended. Louise stays in her office, tuning into live updates. Colonel Weber from the Army visits her, recalling her past assistance with translations. Weber informs her she's the top choice for translating the alien language. He plays a recording of a human speaking to an entity, emitting low growls. Louise insists she needs to be in the same room with the speaker to translate the unknown language accurately. Initially reluctant, Weber walks away, but Louise stops him, suggesting they consult another linguist, Danvers, and asking him to verify Danvers' translation of the Sanskrit word for war before committing. Later that night, Louise falls asleep in front of the news. She wakes up to a helicopter landing in her backyard. Weber returns and asks her the meaning of the Sanskrit word for war, and Louise replies, a desire for more cows. Impressed, Weber orders her to be ready in 10 minutes. Louise joins the team and meets Dr. Ian Donnelly, a theoretical physicist. Weber briefs them that the priority is to understand what the aliens want and where they're from. They arrive at the Montana site, receive immunization shots, and are briefed on the protocol. Louise learns that the site is communicating with other sites and meets Agent Halpern from the CIA, who informs her that they haven't gotten much information from the object since it landed. Louise and Ian are equipped with hazmat suits. They join a team and head to the pod, which opens every 18 hours. Louise is awed by the experience. Inside the pod, they float through a tunnel toward a light, and Weber helps Louise overcome her hesitation. They reach a glass wall, separating them from the entities. A caged bird indicates that oxygen levels are safe. Two giant cephalopod-like creatures, dubbed heptapods, appear behind the glass. The session ends quickly, and they are brought to the disinfection room. Weber tells them they have two hours to figure something out. They watch the news, seeing the world in chaos with lockdowns, riots, and cult rituals. 
Agent Halpern communicates with other sites, but they are also unsuccessful. The next day, Louise and Ian prepare to enter the pod with a whiteboard and pen, hoping to establish a written basis for communication. Inside the pod, Louise writes human and shows it to the heptapods. One of the creatures responds by creating a circular symbol followed by different circular symbols, giving the team their first breakthrough. Back at the site, Weber questions Louise's approach and how to justify it to his superiors. Louise insists that teaching the heptapods their language is crucial to avoid miscommunication and speed up progress. Weber agrees, but requires a list of words for the next session. Louise learns that not all countries support this friendly approach, with China considering a hostile move. Louise explains to Weber that to communicate with the heptapods, they must first teach them basic English before addressing their purpose. Back in the pod, Louise introduces herself and sensing the heptapods' confusion, removes her hazmat suit. The team panics, but she reassures them and continues. She places her palm on the glass and a heptapod mirrors her action, leading to proper introductions. Ian also introduces himself and the heptapods write their names on the glass. Ian nicknames them Abbott and Costello. Louise dreams about her daughter for the first time, imagining them in a field. Over the next few weeks, Louise and Ian continue their research. The heptapods leave no other footprint, and their method of communication remains undetected. The reason for the specific landing locations is still unknown. One breakthrough is discovering no correlation between heptapod speech and writing. Louise learns that heptapod writing is semantic, representing meaning rather than sound, and is free of time, with no forward or backward direction. This non-linear orthography suggests a unique way of processing ideas. Louise and Ian study their language enough to create the first reply and work on expanding their vocabulary, which will take another month. One night after a session, Louise and Ian hang out by a pickup truck overlooking the pod. Ian admires her intelligence and perseverance. They discuss their personal lives and the pressure they face. Meanwhile, outside the site, the world is in chaos with looting, riots, and tensions escalating after a leaked photograph of the aliens goes viral. Some soldiers even contemplate attacking first. One night, Louise dreams of her daughter. She shows her a book about planets, and her daughter shares a class project drawing. Louise explains why she and her father are no longer together, but her daughter reassures her. Louise is jolted from her daydream by Ian and steps out to get some air. She thinks of her daughter as a child and later as a sick teenager in a hospital bed. Later, Louise and Ian discuss the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis, which suggests that immersing in another language can rewire the brain. Ian asks if she's dreaming in the heptapod's language, and Louise sees a heptapod in her room, only to wake up relieved it was a dream. She meets Weber, who leads her to the control room for a Mandarin translation. A satellite picked up a phone conversation with Chinese military chief, General Shang. Louise translates that each of the 12 is offering advanced technology and China's science team is decoding the sets. Confused by phrases like suits, honor, and flowers, Louise learns they refer to Mahjong tiles. Weber informs her that an hour ago, China mobilized forces and Russia is following suit. Louise realizes the Chinese are using a game to communicate with the heptapods framing every conversation as a contest of opposition, victory, and defeat, which she finds problematic. Weber gives Louise an ultimatum to ask the big question. Louise, Ian, and the team enter the pod again. Louise forms logograms, asking the heptapods their purpose. Costello responds with offer weapon. At the site, an argument ensues between Louise, Weber, and Agent Halpern. Louise argues that the heptapods may not distinguish between a weapon and a tool, and Ian adds they might be asking for a trade. A call interrupts, and Halpern suggests the aliens aim to divide humanity. The council disbands, leaving Louise and Ian feeling defeated. Back in the control room, chaos unfolds. China and Russia misinterpreted the message as a threat and cut communication, going off the grid. Louise insists they need to communicate and runs off with Ian to re-enter the pod. Meanwhile, some soldiers mutiny, placing explosives in the room set to detonate in 10 minutes. Louise and Ian arrive, and despite knowing about the bomb, the soldiers let them go. Unaware of the bomb, Louise and Ian talk to Abbott and Costello. Louise asks if they are offering something to humanity, 
The heptapods respond with words like technology, visitors, and friends. She asks them to give the technology now. Suddenly, Abbott starts tapping on the glass. Weber sends security to arrest the rogue soldiers. Back in the room, Abbott keeps tapping on the glass. Louise thinks Abbott wants her to write on the screen. So she places both palms on the glass and begins writing with Abbott. In the middle of it, she dreams of her daughter, setting her off to sleep and holding her hand. After they finish writing, Costello jets off, leaving hundreds of symbols on the screen. Gunshots are heard outside. As the timer hits zero, Abbott forces Louise and Ian out just as the bombs explode, saving them. Louise wakes up in Dr. Kettler's office with a concussion. She learns about the rogue soldiers and finds Ian with Weber in the team. Louise insists they must explain to the heptapods what happened, but Weber's orders have changed. They must evacuate and prepare for retaliation. Suddenly, the pod lifts several miles higher. Later that night, China declares war on the aliens, urging other countries to follow. Louise and Ian continue decoding the heptapod's last message. Louise dreams of her daughter, who asks about a term meaning both parties benefit from a deal. Waking up, Louise learns Ian has made a breakthrough. The symbol for time is everywhere, suggesting one of 12. Louise presents this to the council, proposing that the 12 messages need to be combined. Agent Halpern dismisses this as communication is cut off and conflict is imminent. He plays a recording from Russia in which the aliens say, there is no time, many become one, before the recording is cut off by gunshots. Halpern doubts they can convince the other sites to share data. Ian suggests offering their data first, making it a non-zero-sum game. Louise recalls her daughter's words. Realizing time is short, Louise takes matters into her own hands. She walks to the pod, which surprisingly sends down a vessel. Entering, she is engulfed in a fog-like state, struggling to breathe before her lungs stabilize. As the vessel opens, Louise finds herself in a fog-filled room behind the glass wall. Costello approaches her, revealing that Abbott died from the explosion. Louise breaks down, apologizing on behalf of humanity. She asks Costello to send a message to the other sites. Costello tells her she already has the weapon and should use it. Confused, she asks their purpose. Costello explains their purpose is to help humanity because in 3,000 years, they will need humanity's help. Louise asks how they know the future and her daughter enters her mind again. Louise realizes these are premonitions, not dreams. Costello disappears and Louise is ejected as the pod turns sideways. Ian wraps a blanket around her as a convoy approaches. Louise has another premonition of her daughter asking why her father doesn't look at her the same way anymore. Louise explains it's because she told him something he wasn't prepared for about a rare disease. Meanwhile, pods worldwide turn sideways and the planet prepares for global war. As Louise wanders the site, she has another premonition. Her future daughter asks why her name is Hannah. Louise explains it's a palindrome. In her vision, she sees herself publishing a book about the heptapod's language and teaching it to others. She realizes the heptapod's true purpose. Their weapon is their language. By learning it, one perceives time non-linearly, seeing what's to come. Louise shares her discovery with Ian and Weber, but Weber tells her the mission is over. Outside, Louise has a premonition of attending a gala at the United Nations. General Shang approaches her, saying she did something 18 months ago that changed his mind. He says she called him on his private number, which she didn't know at the time. He shows her the number, ensuring she now knows it. Shang tells her she mentioned his wife's dying words, a message he'll never forget. Realizing what she must do to prevent global war, Louise uses Agent Halpern's satellite phone to call General Shang. This alerts security and soldiers pursue her. Louise hides in the disinfection room. Shang answers and she explains her purpose. Ian joins her, shielding her from the soldiers. She conveys her message to Shang, who receives it successfully. Louise surrenders to security as China pulls out of the attack, prompting other countries to follow. The 12 sites agree to share data, completing the puzzle pieces together. With humanity united, the pods elevate and disappear into space. In the final scenes, Louise and Ian, who will become her future partner, stand together, contemplating their journey ahead. 
Their bond is solidified by a mutual understanding of the future. They begin their life together, ready to face the bittersweet journey with open hearts and minds. That wraps up our recap. What did you think of the film's story? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more captivating stories like this one. See you in the next video.